Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Tanner Tech. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how to build a full fledged Spark Gap Tesla coil. So, let's get started. So, first of all, how a Tesla coil works. So, a Tesla coil first needs a high voltage power supply. This takes a low voltage input and turns it into a high voltage output at about 30,000 volts. Now, this voltage then goes into a circuit that's made of three components. So the first component is a capacitor. Now this capacitor is about 6 nanofarads at 30,000 volts. Now this capacitor bank is formed using four of the homemade capacitors that I showed how to make in a previous video. Each one is rated at about 30,000 volts. But the Tesla coil produces higher voltages due to inductive spikes in the coil. So it needs to be higher. It needs to be about 60,000 volts. So I put four of these homemade capacitors in parallel series, which makes a total of six nanofarads at about 60,000 volts. So the circuit functions because as the high voltage charges the capacitor through the primary coil, which is inductively coupled to the secondary coil through air, it creates a magnetic field rising inside the primary coil. This magnetic field induces current into the secondary coil until the capacitor is charged. Now once the capacitor is charged, the spark gap should be adjusted that as soon as the voltage in the capacitor is high enough, it discharges to the spark gap, which flows current through the opposite direction, rapidly collapsing the magnetic field and creating it in the opposite direction, which again causes current to flow through the secondary coil. This process repeats over and over again, and it's what causes the secondary coil to produce high voltage output. So, this is the basic circuit diagram of how a Tesla coil works. So let's get started building it. You'll need some high voltage capacitors, a Tesla coil secondary coil, a high voltage power supply, a variac, and a spark gap. In previous videos, I showed you how to make these capacitors, the secondary coil, and the ZVS flyback driver. But first, I will be showing you how to build an adjustable spark gap. To build the spark gap, take a piece of PVC pipe and cut a 2 inch to the section off of it. Then, drill a hole in each side for the two screws. Now, after that's done, you can thread your two screws inside, so that way, they can be adjusted in or out for an adjustable spark gap. Now it's time to make the base of the Tesla coil. So to do this, mark out a 10 by 10 inch square on a piece of particle board, and then you can take a jigsaw and cut it out. You will then need to secure the PVC pipe to the board. To do this, make an insert out of particle board and popsicle sticks or whatever else you have and make it so that way you can insert it snugly into the piece of PVC pipe. This will make it so that way the PVC pipe won't wave around, yet you can take it off easily. You can then take this insert and bolt it down to the center of your 10x10 10 10 piece of plywood. You should then be able to snugly fit your secondary coil on the base. It's time to wind the primary coil. Alright, now that I have the primary coil all done, I can now connect all the wires to the rest of the circuit to make it complete. So I'll go around connecting everything with these alligator clip wires. As you can see, I have everything wired up, and when I turn on the coil, this coil doesn't produce the sparks that I'm looking for, and I'm pretty sure this problem is with the secondary, the primary coil. So I'm going to make a new primary coil, and then try it again. Okay, now that I have this 
new primary coil. I'm going to fire up the Tesla coil and see what it can do. Wow. Now that's some good sparks. So, as you can see, that primary coil works very well. And I'm going to be making it look more professional. So because that pancake coil idea didn't work, I will need to make another four-turn coil, and I'll need to make a form to put it around here. I will then mount all the capacitors and spark gaps around this coil, and mount it on these swivel wheels. So, after making the windings look more professional, and adding the capacitors on a rack and the spark gap. This Tesla coil is complete. The capacitor bank is made of pieces of plywood and popsicle sticks and it makes it so the capacitors can be set in loosely. I found about five turns of wire to be the right amount for the primary coil. The reason I did not add a normal top load is because I figured that this Tesla coil operates more efficiently when it doesn't have a top load. Now after connecting the high voltage power supply to the Tesla coil and connecting the grounding clip to ground, this Tesla coil is ready to go. So here's it running. I'll turn it on. As you can see, this Tesla coil puts out some really cool looking sparks. You can see the sparks better when the spark gap is covered. So, as you can see, this Tesla coil works really well with the setup I have, and it looks professionally done. So this is the finished product of my Tesla coil, and as you can see it looks very professionally done, and it works very well. As always, thank you for watching, and please subscribe.